Hello, Pastor Adam here. So we are doing our noon uh, prayer lives where we are going to pray together. We're on day two. Uh, we missed day one because it was we had a service. Uh, so I hope that you at some point uh, follow along. The, the prayer guides are posted at um, all three Harvest Time campuses on the Facebook page. And so that you can look at them and download them uh, and be using them throughout the day. Uh, I just wanted to say a couple things before we get going. Uh, the first thing is I'm super excited for our prayer nights this week uh, where we spend extended time together uh, in prayer and worship. And right now our worship team in, uh, at the Oliva building, the new building, Harvest Time South, are practicing and setting up. And so uh, we hope to have an amazing experience with our, with our blessed God tonight. Um, yes, so that's what's going on. So that's tonight, 6.30 6.30 to 8. Uh, so if you have not familiarized yourself with the prayer guide, um, it uses a pretty simple format, and that is uh, there's four sort of ways in which we come before God. And the first is, is adoration, and the second is repentance, and the third is intercession, and the fourth is meditation. And so we're going to kind of work through uh, this prayer guide uh, together. The, the idea of adoration is that before we we, we pray for anything before we do anything or ask for anything uh, in the presence of our God. We just we, we, we set our minds and our hearts on how great and how glorious he is, and we just praise him. And, and we learn this from Jesus in, in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are holy, you are exalted, you dwell in heaven. We do this. And repentance, obviously, is, is repentance, that before we, uh, we come before with our prayers and petitions, we we gracefully and thankfully uh, repent of our sins and we, we, become, we become clean and forgiven before our, before our God and before his throne. And then the third, the intercession, that's, that's what we're praying for, that we would lift up needs and, and causes before our God, having adored him and having cleansed our hands by uh, the blood of Christ. And then after, after the prayer, there's this section of meditation, and that's where in this sort of thoughtful and prayerful posture before God, having laid our burdens before him, we just, we sit and we meditate in, in calmness um, on what on what he is doing and what he will do in our lives. And so the first, <clears throat> the scripture for today or the theme for day two of this prayer walk uh, is an upper room posture. That's what it's called. And that's from the Acts, from the early church when it said the disciples, um, they were of one mind, continually devoting themselves to prayer. That's Acts 1.14. Uh, that what they did when they wanted to see a move of God and they awaited the Holy Spirit in their lives is they continued uh, day in and day out to pray and to seek his face. And it's a posture of continual prayer. And so that is our goal. And so the goal isn't just that we would come together on these lives for 10 minutes and pray at noon the next 10 days, but that it would be uh, God's people would have a renewed zeal for, for prayer, okay? And so that's the theme for today, this upper room posture of continuous uh, prayer in our lives. Uh, the, first, the first one, adoration. So um, the verse, Isaiah thirty three seventeen was on your prayer guide. It says, your eyes will see the king in his beauty. Your eyes will see the king uh, in his beauty. And so the heart's cry of God's people is that, is that we would look upon our God and King Jesus, and we would just exalt, exalt in his beauty. Another passage, 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. And so then this, in this posture of adoration, we, ha we have to let our minds get off <laughs> ourselves and our troubles and just think about the glory of God. And that verse said that, that we are changed not so much in our, in our determination or not so much in our prayers or not so much in, in our study of the word, but we're changed when we behold who our God is and behold his glory and then, and then we are changed. And so we'll spend some time in that. And one final verse for the adoration, adoration section is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 and 23. And it says, But you have come to Mount Zion, into the city of the living God and heavenly Jerusalem and to myriads of angels, to the general assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and of God. And the idea is that we would, we would, we would look and we would think of ourselves as gathered together because that's what's happening. 
You know, the Bible says we're already seated with Christ, and so when we come before God in prayer, we're seated in the heavenlies, and there's tens of millions of angels around his throne worshiping him, and we, we throw ourselves in, <laughs> in the mix in our prayers. And so we're going to start... Uh, we're going to start with just thanking God and adoring Him for for who for who He is, and in your own words, pray. Don't don't just listen to me, but pray, pray. Heavenly Father, God, you are you are glorious, you are glorious, you are enthroned in heaven, and your your power and your majesty is without without words. And and we 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 hear the sound of Isaiah and when he talks about the angels and they cry out, holy, 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 or John in Revelation, that you are holy and you are worthy and you are precious in our sight, Father. And we just long to see your face. We just desire to be uh, in your presence because you are so glorious and you are so worthy. Father, everything we are and everything we have is from you and we just give you praise today. Give you praise. Father, we adore you and we thank you. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you for your majesty. We thank you uh, that we can come into your presence. And so, Father, Father, we just set our hearts before you, kneeling, as it were, before your throne, and we just give you praise. You are worthy. Worthy are you. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Amen. Amen. And so having, having fixed our our eyes on our, on our great God, having fixed our eyes on his worth and, 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 and adore him, uh, the next part is, is repentance. And this is, this is a blessing. I think sometimes repentance gets a dirty word, but repentance is how we are set free and how we are made right and how we are <laughs> brought into the, the holy place by the blood of Jesus. And so we repent. The verse that is on your guide is Job 42. And it says, I have heard of you, by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you, and therefore I retract and I repent in dust and ashes. And so this flows. You see how this flows together, that, that having laid aside everything else and fixed our eyes on the glory of God, <laughs> the only posture, the only thing left is to, is to repent for, for who we are in light of his and his majesty. Uh, and so the specific focus of repentance for day two uh, is to repent that we are, we are so absorbed in our worries, whether that's corona or whether that's politics or whatever the case might be, that we repent of being so focused on this world and we neglect and we forget the glory of our great God. And so we, that's going to be our cry. And you can do that in your own words. You can think about in the ways that uh, that you have failed to believe that God is glorious and that he is the one who will decide the fate of the nation or he is the one that holds your living and dying in, in his hands and he is the one who is the provider of our fan finances and he is our healer. And so let's let's do prayer. <laughs> let's prayer uh, for, for repentance. And Heavenly Father, God, I we do repent. Father, I repent of in my own life of so many things, Father, where I, I fail to do or fail to hear or fail uh, to believe. And Father, despite the fact that you are all glorious and all powerful and you hold all things in your hands as a sovereign king, there are so many places where, we, where I doubt and where I worry and where I think that I have to plan or prepare for the future. Um, instead of just leaving that in your great hands. And so, Father, I repent. I repent of the anxieties in my heart. I repent of not trusting you fully. I repent of giving in to, to worry as though if the election were to go one way and not the other, that, uh, that somehow you are no longer in control. And, Father, we are, we are sorry. I am sorry. I repent. Father, I pray that not just would my repentance be a confession of guilt, but that it would allow your Holy Spirit to change my and my listeners' hearts, God, that, that we would be people who trust you and who love you, and our faith is untarnished by politics or corona or violence, but that we would be people who are just enthralled with you, enthralled with you, God. 
the third part of this prayer guide uh, is intercession. And so having given God the praise that he deserves and having repented of sins, and this is obviously just a template, uh, the idea would that you'd be spending lots of time throughout the day uh, in these various things. This is just sort of a, a model, if you will, a little, a little help. Um, intercession is, is praying for causes outside of yourself. Uh, and the verse that we have for today is, is Psalms 80, verse 1, and it says, Give ear, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned above the, sh the cherubim, shine forth shine forth. Um, I love this. It's like I wrote this prayer guide I did. There's so many things that we could pray for in these times. There's so many pressing needs, whether it's wildfires or hurricanes or political unrest or violence in the streets or lawlessness or apostasy or abortion or human trafficking or whatever the case might be. Uh, in this intercession is just that God's people, God's people would have their deepest and most uh, foundational hearts cry that the glory of God would shine forth in whatever avenue that that takes. That's what it says. You are enthroned above the cherubim. The most powerful angels uh, shine forth. And so our, our, our intercession for today is, is simply that we would be people who desire the glory of God, who desire to see him move, not necessarily for our sakes or for our own benefits, uh, but just that God would receive glory and that glory would be seen uh, by his people and by those who don't yet know him, and thus uh, they would turn to him. And so let's just pray, pray that heart. Heavenly Father, God, we, we just echo the psalmist, Father. We just pray that you would shine forth in these days. Father, that no matter how dark or how dreary times seem, <laughs> you're the God who breathed universes. And we just hunger and thirst, God, to see, to see your glory in our day. Father, that your name would be praised. And whatever path you take <laughs> with our nation or with our own lives, Father, let it be true, let our words be true that we don't care that we don't care what the physical outcome is. Let it be true that our hearts just cry that you would be seen to be glorious, that you would shine forth, that the world would know that our God reigns. And so, Father, we just pray for that. We pray that you would step into our lives and that you would, that you would shine, that you would step into our lives and that your voice would be heard, that you would uh, step into our lives and our cities and our country and that you would just plant your flag of <laughs> sovereign ownership over us, God, that, that we would see you and that we would praise you and that we would just be content in, in magnifying your name, whatever, whatever that looks like. And so, Father, we both pray that we would see your light shine uh, and we pray also that our hearts would desire that above all else. Shine, Father God, shine. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you're if you're following along in the in the prayer guide, the final thing is is meditation. And that's just the sort of sit with those things. You know, we've we've come before God and and given him praise and glory. We've come before God and repented of sins and we trust that they're forgiven. We've come before him um, with our with our intercession and our prayers, and we believe that he hears and that he answers. And so we just sit and we meditate on on that and trusting that has happened. Uh, the specific uh, meditation from the prayer guide is is an upper room posture and that is simply that um, the way that the Acts world was changed, the early church was changed, was because these people had seen Christ, because they were eyewitnesses and because they were people who spent time in the presence of their God, like uh, both the disciples, they said they took note uh, that they were ordinarily ordinary unschooled men, but they took note that they had spent time with Jesus. And so our meditation should be, uh, do people take note of us? Do they take note that we have spent time with our Lord Jesus? Do our, do our words and our smiles and our eyes <laughs> sparkle because we have been in the presence of the King? You know, do our face shine like Moses uh, when he with unveiled face beheld the glory of his God? And so we just meditate on our lives and our witness uh, and trusting that God will shape us uh, into his image. That is, 
That is day two. That is our prayer guide. So I pray that whether you're watching now or you watch later, that you not only would participate in this, but you would spend lots of time uh, in your own way before your God, that, that God's people in these times would pray and repent and intercede uh, for the nation and for his name's sake. So I encourage you to do that. And I hope to see you guys tonight at 630 uh, at Oliva uh, at Harvest Time South. That would be amazing. God bless you guys.